Hello my lovely friends, my name is Ava and today I really wanted to talk about some paranormal romances. I love paranormal romances and I've read so many of them but the majority of them are all from series like 20 book long series. So I thought I'd mention some of my favorites for you. Paranormal can come in many different shapes and sizes. I view them as romance books that take place in our world earth that have like mystical paranormal elements to it, vampires, ghosts, shifters, aliens even sometimes. There's even one on here with like like a time travel -y aspect too. I don't know if that would be considered paranormal, but I threw it on this list in case. But yeah, let's let's get started, shall we? The first series that I wanna mention, cause I'm gonna be mentioning series, is the Moon series by Lisa Kessler. This is a wolf shifter series. There are um, eight books in the series. Well, not just wolves. Um, it's also panther shifters. So in this world, you have panther shifters and wolf shifters and they're kind of like at war with each other, like they're sworn enemies. And so this book is about each guy in this werewolf pack finding their mate. Some of them may or may not be mated to a panther shifter. So it's like rivals, hate to love especially book one book one moonlight is about our hero who's trying to find this panther shifter who is wreaking havoc in their city that he they keep finding dead bodies and they think that these panthers are trying to kill them or are killing them and then he sends a panther shifter one day in a diner and he goes to find it to confront it and he also can tell that that is his mate. But the kicker is this heroine who's a panther shifter doesn't know that she is a panther shifter. She just wakes up in the middle of the night, like in the woods with no clothes on, not knowing how she got there. She thinks that she's sleepwalking. She does not know that she's shifting into a panther. He is trying to convince her that shifters are real and trying to show her the ropes of the shifter world um, while also falling in love with her and trying to like show her that they're mates. Um, that's book one. That one's really good. And another one of my favorites is the last book, book eight. This is the only book where like the hero is the panther shifter and it is really good. This one is New Moon. This one is probably my favorite. I love it so much. So please pick up this series. It is very underhyped. Not a lot of people have read this. Literally book eight has um, only 237 readings. The time travel one I wanted to mention is Transcendence by Shay Savage. I don't know why, I think that tra time travel it's kind of like magical paranormally in a in a sense. Um, if it not if it's not, if you're not into just like a time travel one, you can you can skip to the next book. Um, but Transcendence is one of my favorite romance books of all time. And I can thank Riley Marie for that. She got me hooked onto this book and it is so good. So this is a time travel romance, as I've said before, um, take pla taking place during the times where cavemen walked the earth. Our hero is named Ed. He is a caveman. And our heroine in here, Beth, is from our present day world. And she gets like sucked back in time to Ed's time. And Ed ends up finding her and kind of like claiming her as his mate. He does not know that she's a time traveler. He also does not understand language at all. The entire book, like, don't expect him to. So, like, he just loves this woman because of how she is and how she acts and that the fact that she's his, honestly. He's a caveman, y'all. <laughs> but this book is like first person all through Ed's perspective, which was so interesting to read about. Um, so the paranormally, maybe this isn't paranormal, y'all. I'm sorry. Um, because <laughs> I was gonna say the paranormally aspect is the time travel, but like. Is it though? Is it paranormally? I'm sorry. Let's get on to the next book. I just really rec want to recommend this book at any chance that I get. So please read this book. Okay, a series I know is definitely paranormal is the Black Dagger Brotherhood series by J.R. Ward. I cannot put all the books in the series in this picture. Maybe I can, I don't know, but there's like over 20. This romance series I think is amazing. This is a vampire romance series. So if you love vampires, I really recommend checking this series out. Book one is not my favorite. And so I know a lot of people stop reading the series at book one because it didn't really catch their interest. And I totally get that. But once you get to book three, you will be utterly obsessed, honestly. And I know I hate saying that, like you gotta read more in the series to like it. Cause I don't like doing that, but I'm being honest. <laughs> like. Book three is where it's at. Anyway, in this world, um, we have vampires and humans and vampires know that humans exist. Humans do not know that vampires exist. So there's a secret society of vampires living in the world that humans don't know about. And with the society of vampires, there is the Black Dagger Brotherhood, which are these group of warriors that are sworn to protect vampire kind. There are these kind of like zombie type 
not zombie, but they're kind of like husk humans, husk people called lessers that are trying to like kill humans and vampires, not humans, maybe humans. I don't know. They're trying to kill everything. Anyway, they're specifically after killing vampires though. And so the Black Dagger Brotherhood is there to eliminate them, the threat, and to just protect the vampire race in general. So in book one, Dark Lover, this is the introduction to this series. And this one is all about Wrath and Beth. So Wrath in here is actually king of the vampires. He is the last full-blooded vampire in the world, I'm pretty sure. He is king of all of them, and he is like the leader of the Black Dagger Brotherhood. His friend Darius comes to him one day at the beginning of this book, he's also a vampire, and he's like, hey dude, I know this woman who is about to transition into a vampire. This series is really interesting when it comes to vampire lore and how vampires are and everything because you cannot be bitten to become a vampire. You're born a vampire and you transition at a certain age. So our heroine in here is Beth and she's the vampire that Darius is talking about. So Darius is talking to Wrath and it's like, I know this woman who is about to be changed into a vampire. Her transition is about to happen. I need you to help her because when a woman transitions into a vampire or anyone transitions into a vampire, they have to drink the blood of the opposite sex in order to fully form into their vampire selves. Um, and so he's like, if she drinks your blood, that will give her a higher chance of survival because a lot of people don't survive the transition. Wrath at first is like, no, I don't want to do that. <laughs> um, but then he ends up across this woman and is utterly intrigued by her and obsessed with her. He agrees to let her feed on him. And she doesn't know that she's becoming a vampire this entire time. She has no clue what she's about to go through. And he kind of like has to break it to her and introduce her to his world and everything. It's good. I like this one. It's not my favorite. Um, definitely um, Lover Awakened, which is book three is my favorite as well as my top favorite being Lover Mine, which is John Matthews book. Anyway, let's get on to the rest of the books. I've talked about this series for a while. <laughs> An alien romance one that I think is, is a paranormal series is the Fireblood Dragon series by Ruby Dixon because they are shifters as well. And shifters to me are definitely paranormal. So this is a 10 book, yes, 10 book series all about dragon shifters. So one day on earth, a rift opened up in the sky and dragons started flying through the rift and decimating the entire world with our fire, essentially. It's years later, we now have a post-apocalyptic earth setting. There are now only a few human camps and survivors after this rift opened up. Each book, except for one, one of them, is about a dragon shifter man um, falling in love with a human woman. Um, my favorite book is book seven, where it's a dragon woman falling in love with a human man. That's fire in her eyes. I absolutely adore that one. That's, one of my, that's, that's my favorite one. Um, but I'm going to mention the summary for book one. So book one is fire in his blood. So Claudia is living in, I believe, Fort Dallas, which is a fort of human people who have survived. And um, it is horrible. Like the conditions are horrible. People are starving. Women are selling their bodies for food. Like and there is no hygiene like anywhere like it is horrible um so claudia goes out of the camp to go scavenge for things that she could find outside of the camp and she kind of like gets in trouble with the high up dude of this camp they offer her up as a sacrifice to one of the dragons and they come to realize that these dragons can actually shift into human forms like into human beings um or humanoid form they're not humans one of the dragons can scent claudia shifts into his human form and claims that she is his mate. I just love this series, it's really good. The dragons in here only speak telepathically, so you have a lot of heroes in this in this series who don't speak at the beginning because the only way to telepathically talk to somebody is if they are another dragon who speaks telepathically or they are connected to you by being their mate. Like they have to pump their venom into their mate in order for them to be bonded. In the first book, they don't talk or are unable to communicate with words for the first half of the book until um, he gives her his venom, essentially. Um, so I really love this series. It's like really underhyped when it comes to Ruby Dixon books, so please check it out. Next, I have Queen Takes Nights by Jolie Sue Burkhart. This is book one in the There of Vampire Queen series. I think I've read the first two, but I haven't read all of them, so I'm not going to recommend the entire series. This first one was highly entertaining. Um, so this series is all centered around this girl. She thinks she's a normal girl and people are trying to like chase her or find her or something. Like people are out to kill her. She doesn't know why until these two like monster creatures come across her and are like, hey, you're a vampire queen and we're going to be your like 
blood, which is like um, people she feeds off of that are like in her royal court, essentially, kind of. I don't know how to describe it, but they're basically there for to protect her and to pleasure her. She's then thrown into a world of vampires and the vampire worlds and everything, and she keeps adding people to her court, into her blood. Um, I think that's what it's called, her blood? I don't know, her group of people that are with her. So she has multiple, multiple partners. And yeah, there's a lot of blood play stuff in here, a lot of talk about vampires. So I really thought book one was entertaining. I haven't read the rest of the series just because there got to be so many people in her grouping that I was like lost. I was like, who is this person? Who is that person? How are they all together at once? I'm confused. <laughs> but overall, it's a very, very entertaining book. Another series that I adore that I cannot shut up about is the Immortals After Dark series by Cressley Cole. If you love paranormal romance and you have not read these books yet, get with it. Get freaking with it. All these books are so different, but the general gist of this series is about paranormal creatures finding their mates. You have Valkyries, vampires, werewolves, lichens, you have demons, you have witches. It, it's so good. The series is fantastic. The first one, A Hunger Like No Other, is about a lichen and a vampire slash Valkyrie. So the hero, the lichen in this situation, he has actually been captured by some vampires and been taken as a captive underground, chained up underground. But uh, lichens can scent things from far away and he can scent like the above, they're underground. He can scent above on normal plain earth and he ends up scenting his mate and he's never been able to find her. He's like, oh my gosh, I need to get out of these bonds right now because if I, if her scent goes away and I can't find her, I'm screwed. He needs to get out of these bonds. He needs to get, break these chains. And so he literally breaks his leg, breaks his freaking leg in order to get out of the chains to go find his mate. <laughs> like, dang. Anyway, so he goes and finds his mate and his utterly furious when he realizes that she's part vampire, which is like the sworn enemies to lichens. But he cannot help himself. He ends up kidnapping her and taking her to a dwelling. He's trying to figure out how his mate can be a freaking vampire. My favorite one in this series, I have so many, but one of them is Demon from the Dark, which I think is a, a demon, giant demon man, giant scar demon man who doesn't speak at the beginning, falls for, I believe, a witch. Um, it's so good. I love that one. And then I also adore Wicked Abyss, which is book 17. Because this one's a Hades and Persephone kind of like inspired thing. Um, you have like a demon hero who rules the under underworld realm and um, like a fae princess he captured um, and put in a tower um, because she is actually the reincarnation of his previous mate and they are mates again. And she's like, I don't remember my past life. I don't know what you're talking about, dude. And it's so good. I love that one. This series is just fantastic. You need to read it if you have not. An author duo I adore is Tiffany Roberts. And so I have to recommend one by them. This is His Darkest Craving. This is a demon monster shadow ghost thing. I don't know how to describe it. <laughs> but our heroine in here, Sophie, she rents out this cabin at the edge of these woods in order to work on her writing. She's a writer. And so Cruz, who's like the shadowy demon creature, protects these woods, lives in these woods, and kills any human that he comes across until he stumbles across Sophie in this cabin. He like goes into her house when she's asleep at night. And for the first time ever, he cannot kill a human. And he is so confused as to why he cannot kill her. Cruz becomes kind of like obsessed with her. And then Sophie realizes that Cruz is like a thing. The rest like goes from there. I don't want to say anything else, but um, he he's good. You wouldn't think that like a demon shadow entity would like be hot to be with, but um, he definitely is. <laughs> An underrated one I feel like people don't talk about all that often is Fantasy Lover by Shirley Kenyon. So this one is centered around Grace, a human. One day her friend gets her kind of like a gag gift of a book of spells. Um, and one night when they're drunk on some wine, they end up reciting one of the spells and a man pop pops out of this book. <laughs> His name is Julian of Macedon and he has been cursed by a witch to be in this book and summoned by women throughout generations to basically be like their genie for a little bit for pleasure, <laughs> like to do anything for them to make them feel good. And so our heroine Grayson here is trying to figure out a way to break his curse for him because he's been a slave in this book for forever and she really wants to save him and help him out. So this book is full of witchcraft, witchiness, um, spells, 
um, just magicalness. Um, this takes place in New Orleans, which I thought was really cool. And so yeah, this is definitely an underrated one. I haven't read any more in this series, but I definitely want to. If you've read this series, please let me know which one is your favorite. I'd love to know. The last two books I want to mention are two of my favorite werewolf shifter romances. First is Her Sweet Alpha by Thayer King. So at the beginning of this book, werewolves and shifters were kind of like outed to the world, to humans. So humans now know that shifters exist and um, they like live on earth with them. Dane is a alpha of a wolf pack, a wolf shifter pack. And he's getting kind of old and he's just wanting to find his fated mate to finally make babies and have life, uh, have a life with, a happy life with. So it's kind of sad down in the dumps. So him and his buddies go to this diner in a next town over or something. And when he's there, he ends up scenting his mate and he goes insane. He's like, where is she? Where is she? I need to find her. Finds out that it's actually his server for the night. And he is all up on her like hugging her wanting like has like puppy dog eyes for her and it's like you're my mate oh my gosh the heroine of this situation hallie she is shocked um she just found out that shifters were real she did not know they existed and so she's kind of shocked this giant he's huge wolf shifter um because claiming that they're mates um and so um he kind of takes it slow with her and kind of like introduces her to the shifter world and werewolves in general. This one was just so good and very sweet, but hot. <laughs> and the last one I have to talk about is Mating the Huntress by Talia Hebert. This werewolf shifter romance is just so good. If you want a sweet, irreverent, pining hero, pick this one up. Luke in here is our werewolf shifter. And one day when he's at this store, I think like a cafe of sorts, he ends up scenting his mate and realizes that it's one of the women who works there named Chastity. And he's a little shy and doesn't really know how to approach her. So he kind of like just comes to sit in the cafe every day, trying to get up enough nerve to like ask her out, like ask her on a date, his mate on a date. And he's like a little worried because he thinks she's a human who knows nothing about werewolves and stuff and doesn't know how to like tell her that they're mates without her freaking out. Um, but little does he know that Chastity knows exactly what Luke is. Chastity comes from a family of werewolf hunters. So she's immediately able to tell that Luke is a werewolf. And when he finally asks her out, she sees this as a perfect opportunity to finally kill her first werewolf. And it's just so good. It's so funny too, because on their date, she tries to like kill him. And he is like even more in love with her after that. He's like, oh my gosh, this one is amazing. She's so strong. She tried to kill me. Oh my, like he is obsessed with her. So please pick this one up if you love werewolf shifter romances. There's like an amazing scene that I love in here where like she runs away from him on purpose to like get all hot and heavy and to have her ch to have him chase her in his like form or whatever. And oh, it was so good. I loved it. So there you have it. Those are 10 paranormal romance recommendations for you. Please let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you plan to. I would love to know. And if you don't feel like commenting any of those things, you can leave me any paranormal related emoji in the comment section down below. A, a ghost, vampire, wolf, whatever the case may be. Anyways, thank you all so, so much for watching. I will see you soon in my next one. Bye y'all. Wake up. Today's gonna be a good day. 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 Wake up. Today's gonna be a good day.